On the 16th of October 1946, inside of the gymnasium of Nuremberg Prison, the condemned remnants of Hitler's government and Nazi hierarchy were led out one by one for their executions. Amongst the men who were executed were Joachim von Ribbentrop, the former Nazi foreign minister, Ernst Kaltenbrunner, a ruthless SS executioner and overseer, and also Julius Streicher, who was one of the most virulent beasts and supporters of Adolf Hitler. There was one man who was missing, who did not go through the gallows inside of the execution chamber, and that man was Hermann Göring. Göring, the head of the Luftwaffe, and possibly the most high-profile defendant of the Nuremberg trials, had died in the hours before his execution, as he had consumed a cyanide capsule, evading the hangman. The man who carried out the executions, John C. Woods, has gained a reputation for being a botching executioner, who made a mess of the proceedings, as the condemned were not instantly killed as they plunged through the drop, but also some hit their heads on the trap door as they went through. However, the Nazis were allowed last words and final statements, which were issued on the scaffold, and these were heard by priests and witnesses inside of the room. Some of these phrases were more repentant than others, and some of the condemned uttered disgusting phrases that showed they were going to their deaths as ardent a Nazi as they once were. Welcome to the Untold Past. Join us today as we look at the last words of the Nuremberg executions, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The executions of those condemned Nazis of the Nuremberg trials, as in the most senior Nazi war criminals, occurred as mentioned inside the small gymnasium found within Nuremberg Prison's courtyard. There were specifically three gallows which had been made in this room. Two were to be used by the executioner John C. Wood simultaneously, so he could execute them quicker. The third gallows was to serve as a spare in case something went wrong, but the whole executions of the Nuremberg trials were carried out within two hours. They were considered botched, as there were a number of problems. Some of the men took longer than anticipated to die, as the drop did not snap their necks, with the executioner Woods miscalculating the drop required to do this. Also, some of the men were left bloodied, as they hit their heads as they fell through the trap door. But also, inside the execution chamber, were a number of witnesses who saw the proceedings. The final words of the condemned were recorded, as they either entered the chamber, or as they uttered these on the scaffold. The men were accompanied by American military policemen, who helped them up the steps of the gallows, and recorded final words, before the executioner made his preparations. Joachim von Ribbentrop was the first of the men executed, after the body of Hermann Göring was displayed to the witnesses. He was the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, and many believed he was rather incompetent. He was involved before the war in brokering a number of pacts with Mussolini's Italy, and also with the Soviets. However, after 1941, his influence inside of government declined, as the Nazis were at war. But at the end of the war, he was convicted of war crimes and crimes against humanity, and specifically in his role in starting the war. He was the first led towards the gallows, and it was said of his execution. Von Ribbentrop entered the execution chamber at 1.11am, Nuremberg time. He was stopped immediately inside the door by two army sergeants who closed in on each side of him and held his arms, while another sergeant who had followed him removed manacles from his hands and replaced them with a leather strap. It was planned originally to permit the condemned men to walk from their cells to the execution chamber with their hands free, but all were manacled immediately following Göring's death. Von Ribbentrop was able to maintain his apparent stoicism to the last. He walked steadily towards a scaffold between his two guards, but he did not answer at first when an officer standing at the foot of the gallows went through the formality of asking his name. When the query was repeated, he almost shouted, Joachim von Ribbentrop, and then mounted the steps without any sign of hesitation. When he turned around on the platform to face the witnesses, he seemed to clench his teeth and raise his head with the old arrogance. When asked whether he had any final messages, he said, God protect Germany, in German, and then added, May I say something else? Joachim von Ribbentrop was allowed to utter further words, and his final words were recorded as, God have mercy on my soul. My final wish is that Germany should recover her unity, and that, for the sake of peace, there should be an understanding between East and West. I wish peace to the world. But von Ribbentrop was then sent crashing through the trap door at 1.30am. Following him was Wilhelm Keitel, 
the most senior member of the military, and Hitler's chief of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. Keitel was considered a lackey of Hitler's, and he was someone who would do anything to appease the Führer. Keitel was seen as a major war criminal, and someone who was a main aggressor in the German war effort. He emerged in the execution chamber two minutes after von Ribbentrop's trap had been strung, and his body was hidden behind the first scaffold. He was not as tense, and Keitel remained proud, with his head held high, as he was taken towards the gallows. His final words were, I call on God Almighty to have mercy on the German people. More than two million German soldiers went to their deaths for the fatherland before me. I follow now my sons, all for Germany. After this, Keitel crashed through the trap door, after the noose had been secured and a black cap had been placed over his head. Up next was Ernst Kaltenbrunner, a high-ranking member of the SS. He served as the chief of the Reich security main office and oversaw the Gestapo, Kripo and SD, and was responsible for a significant part of the genocide conducted by the SS. He was the highest-ranking member of the SS who was brought to trial, and as he was led up the scaffold, he was recorded as saying, I have loved my German people and my fatherland with a warm heart. I have done my duty by the laws of my people, and I am sorry my people were led this time by men who were not soldiers, and that crimes were committed, of which I had no knowledge. Germany, good luck. He was one of the Nazis of Nuremberg, who seemed to go to his death with a degree of solemnity, and he wished for a greater Germany one day, but still denied he had any involvement in any crimes. Next up was Alfred Rosenberg, a Nazi theorist and ideologist, who created a lot of the Nazi policies that caused such terror and persecution. He was one of the main authors of the persecution of the Jew policies, as well as other ideas such as Lebensraum. He was tried on all four counts at Nuremberg, and was linked to being a planner of the invasion of Norway, but his final words on the scaffold were possibly the most underwhelming. When he was asked if he had anything to say, he replied, with simply no, and that was it, his final recorded words. Hans Frank, when he entered the execution chamber, smiled, and he seemed nervous as he approached the scaffold. He had converted to Catholicism in prison, and he was a man who served as the head of the general government in occupied Poland, and he instilled a reign of terror into the nation, and oversaw four extermination camps. On the scaffold, his final words were stated to have been, I am thankful for the kind treatment during my captivity, and I ask God to accept me with mercy. Wilhelm Frick was the sixth to go through the trapdoor, and he was a minister of the interior of Hitler's cabinet, and he was involved in creating many of the laws in Germany, including the Nuremberg Laws, that persecuted Jews. His final words on the scaffold were short, and he just said, Long live eternal Germany. Julius Stryker emerged in the execution chamber 7th of the condemned Nazis, and he was brought in struggling and shouting anti-Semitic vitriol. He may have even offered a final Hitler salute towards the witnesses, and he was a horrific editor of Der Stürmer, a Nazi newspaper. His final words were, Adele, my dear wife, but he struggled and put up more of a fight than the other Nazis. Fritz Salkel emerged after Stryker, and he claimed on the scaffold that, I am dying innocent, the sentence is wrong. God protect Germany, and make Germany great again. Long live Germany, God protect my family. Salkel was involved in labour deployment and slave labour programmes, and he would in his final moments protest his innocence, but of course this did nothing, and very little to actually spare him from the gallows, as John C. Woods secured the noose around his neck. He believed he had been condemned by the victors of the war. Alfred Jodl was the penultimate man to go to the gallows. He wore a black coat of his Wehrmacht uniform, which had been hurriedly put on, and Jodl was very nervous as he made his way into the execution chamber. He was haggard as he walked, and he was helped up the steps, and his final words were, My greetings to you, my Germany, before he plunged through the gallows but the final execution that was carried out was upon Arthur Sesenquart, the Chancellor of Austria before the Anschluss. He held a number of different positions inside the Third Reich, and was also made the Reich Commissar of the Occupied Netherlands. He was responsible for instigating a reign of terror inside of the land, and he subjected many people to forced labour, and thousands were deported to concentration camps, where they were then slaughtered. As he was helped at the scaffold, Sesenquart seemed to be rather reflective, on his execution and impending doom. He stated as his final words, I hope that this execution is the last act of the tragedy of the Second World War, 
and that the lesson taken from this world war would be that peace and understanding should exist between people. I believe in Germany. Within a couple of hours, the ten executed men of the Nuremberg trials had been killed, and they were then placed inside of coffins ready to be cremated. These were the final remnants of Hitler's government, and in the years after, there would be others who were brought to trial and were executed. Nuremberg was the most high-profile set of executions. Many of the men who were sent through the trapdoor were reflective on their time in government, and some believed that they had been victims of a miscarriage of justice, and that they were condemned for their role on being on the losing side of the Second World War, being put to death for nothing more than Allied propaganda, rather than their actions and crimes. But their last words were the final thoughts of some of the Second World War's most barbaric war criminals. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.